What's up my fellow crustaceans, Lobster Boffin here. I've got a brand new series for you guys. I'm gonna be playing The Sea Will Claim Everything. This is an indie point and click adventure. I've played about five minutes of it. This is gonna be almost entirely blind. And I think we should just get right into it because so far it's been amazing and quirky. Let's initiate a new connection. Attention, you are entering the land of dreams. Time runs at a different pace here, and you should attempt to interact with things at the same speeds as you do elsewhere. I can't read that fast enough. I often think about that old metaphor, the one that says we are all islands on a wide sea, especially these days. Now that things are more difficult than before, and the world appears to be harsher than we once imagined it to be. We're all like islands, the philosopher said. Perhaps it's true. I cannot help but remember an older saying, scratched on the cave wall somewhere by a long forgotten prophet. In the end, the sea will claim everything. The ancient words crash into my mind like waves, waking me from sleep, filling me with feelings I cannot fully understand. We are like islands. Does it mean we are connected? Do we share a common origin? Or just the common fate of sinking? Hold on a second and let me just set my timer, I forgot to do that. Ah, I'm sorry. I've drifted off into my thoughts again. You have come, and I should welcome you properly. Thank you for hearing my call, for using this window. I am in great need of assistance. Underhome was invaded by disgusting, violent goons claiming it was being foreclosed. That's an unusual trope in fantasy games. I kicked them out. But the house is panicked, and nothing is working as it should. And I fear there is more evil at work here, in the fortunate isles. Lord Urizen is putting pressure on our leaders, and his ships are tainting the seas with their filth. I wish I knew the details, but I'm stuck here, trying to keep everything in balance. You know, it would probably be a lot simpler to explain everything via the proper dialogue interface. Assuming it works, of course. I had to grow it all rather quickly. Wait, the graphics are still off, aren't they? Silly me. Could you turn them on? It's that lever on your left. Um, this lever, actually. Bam. Ah, oh, much better. So let's give this a go. Click on the arrow, then on me, and hope nothing blows up. That's a wonderful cell. Arrow, then I'm assuming it's you. Hello there. Biotalkatron enabled. Wall of text active. Dialogue options functional. Smell of the day, lavender. So I think that gives you a great sense of how this game is going to be. It's just bizarre. And I like that the frame is interactive. I mean, you've got the lever and a button. And more buttons. I think that controls sound. It does. That's pretty cool. Well, let's start at the top. The. I am the Mysterious Druid. Scion of the Mysterious Druid family. Devoted to the arts of techno-druidism. That is to say, the making and shaping of living technology. That sounds really cool. Just gonna say that. I am fully aware of the ironic nature of my name, and I've come to see it as something to be oddly proud of. Please, just call me THE. I'll do that. I will do that. So tell me about your underhome. Underhome, these caverns and rooms that you see around you, have been the home of the mysterious druid family for generations. It was begun by Matilda, mysterious druid, my great-great-great-grandmother. But you must understand that this is no ordinary house. 
Underholm is a living being, a huge and complex creature quite unlike anything you know. It does not think and feel like you and I do, but it does think and feel, and what has happened to it is a violation. It is hurt, and afraid, and trying to protect itself and its inhabitants. Okay. So you said you needed my help, right? I don't even know where to begin. A group of goons entered Underholm a few days ago, claiming the house was being foreclosed, and that I had to move out and they could take all of my belongings. They broke several things, ruined an ancient carpet that belonged to my grandmother, and put the house into a state of panic. To make matters worse, the ecological and biomagical balance of the entire region seems to be in flux. I'm trying to do what I can with the limited systems at my disposal, but it's not enough. And on top of that, I haven't heard back from Niam. Niam. Niam? I don't know. Niam. My girlfriend, who went to investigate the imbalance several weeks ago, is it? How old are you? Like 200? That's an amazing beard. I think you'd be a little bit more committed than having a girlfriend. Well, um... You mentioned a window earlier, can you tell me about that? Yes, the window allows you to directly interact with our world, not using nothing but that, uh, mouse, was it? I can never remember what kind of biotech the people of your world use. Thankfully, time runs differently in our two universes, so if you close the window and return later, no time will have passed on our side. The window also allows you to pick up objects and talk to people using special interfaces. Oh, and, um, I'm sorry about the movement errors that are a bit rubbish, really, but I didn't have time to grow better ones. So I guess he grows technology. That's really neat. You also mentioned the Fortunate Isles. The Fortunate Isles are the place that this window that you see on your screen is connected to. We're on the Isle of the Moon, the northernmost of the Isles. The two other major islands are the Isle of the Sun and the Isle of the Stars though there are many tiny, unexplored islands around. It's a beautiful part of the lens of dream, and one I care deeply about. Okay. Why don't you tell me more about your girlfriend, Niam? Niam. I can't pronounce that. I'm never gonna get that right. Niam left several days before the foreclosing goons arrived. She was going to travel around, Take some readings to help us understand the imbalances that we think are being caused by Lord Urizen's ships. She hasn't been gone long enough for me to be seriously worried, but if you could keep an eye out for her, I'd appreciate it. These are strange times, and we're not always safe when we should be. Hmm. Well, tell me about those foreclosing goons. Yes, apparently my house is facing foreclosure, but the thing is, as I tried to explain to those goons, I've never taken up a credit with a bank. It's absurd. Underholm has belonged to my family for generations. We built it ourselves. How dare those greedy monsters claim they can just take it away from us? Maybe Mabur Peng Penglog can help us figure out what's going on. Well, why don't you help me uh, fix your house? Underholm is a living being and the damage it has taken from the goons is both physical and psychological. Both types of damage may not be readily apparent, and may in some way be interconnected. Ask the other inhabitants for help and advice, especially Waikato, the Taniwa fish on the second floor. He's lived here even longer than I have. My great-grandfather and he were close friends, having met in a faraway country where they speak in a very peculiar way. Japan, I guess? Waikato can swim through Underholm's arteries and find problems that are otherwise hard to detect. Great. I'm just gonna ask you about Eddie, even though I've never heard of it. Eddie is a holographic artificial intelligence that helps me take care of Underholm. Well, that's his function, but it's not all he is. He's not just a machine, he's also a transvestite with an excellent dress sense, a mean druidism the reaping player, and my friend. He'll help you find your way around Underholm. That is one of the more unique artificial intelligences that I will have met. Well, that's everything you have to say, Mr. Um, the. 
What's this? Smiley face. Underhome.root.system slash main. It's a smiley face. The screen can only be, be operated by the and Niam. So I can't play with it, I guess. What's this thing? It's Eddie! Biodolcatron enabled. Wall of Tits. All of that. Smell of the day is Satsuma now. Okay. Let's look at, uh, what? Eddie. Eddie, tell me about yourself. I've always had an irresistible desire to wear clothing. Some say it's inappropriate for a holographic AI to wear clothing, but why? I say, do as you please, so long as it doesn't hurt anyone. And if someone disagrees, murder them. That was a joke. No, it wasn't. I'm a killer AI. No, I'm not. You would say that. Freaky, huh? True story. I'm not sure I trust this, uh... Fucked up thing. Wow. No. Eddie, this is the control room, right? This room is the heart of Underhome. Well, that's not really true. Underhome actually has a real heart. It's about as big as a boulder. So this room isn't, isn't really like a heart at all. I don't know why I said that. Just pretend I didn't. Imagine I said that this... Imagine I said that this, the room from which the can control many of the house's functions, including its magical sensory organs. I'm not sure if I'm reading that. Imagine I said that this, the room from where, well, okay, sure. That's why you can't leave until the crisis is over. Okay. His name being the is funny, but that's just gonna get in the way, wow. Tell me about the Fortunate Isles, Eddie. There's three main islands. The Isle of the Sun, the Isle of the Stars, and the Isle of the Moon. Each has its own government and its own traditions, but relations have always been good. There used to be a lot of travel before the economy went bust. Now, not so much. I think it's a shame. Tell me about the floor closure, why don't you? The whole situation makes about as much sense as wheels on a giraffe. Which is not a lot, unless I missed a real revolution in transportation. I see. Anything to say about an air filter, Eddie? For any reason? I think there's something wrong with the air filtration system. It's not dangerous at the moment, but it needs to be fixed. I'd guess that all that needs to be done is for the correct settings to be engaged once. Engaged once. Underhome generally know what it's supposed to do, it's just a little confused at the moment. about the roots. Waikato mentioned something about the roots having absorbed the wrong materials from the ground. That does not sound good. There are settings for that which you can only access in the root cellar. Part of the problem is that no one's touched those settings for years, not since before the was born. There's a lot we don't know about Underhome, sadly. Hmm. Tell me about the. I think he's made his family proud. It's not easy being the son of such great thinkers and inventors but he's taken care of Underhome with a great deal of dedication and love. Sounds nice. What about Underhome? Anything you want to say, Eddie? Everything's a bit of a mess at the moment. With the house being in shock, the being, the being completely overworked again. That's just hard to figure out. And me not having any hands. Does the word chaos ring a bell? Hmm. Well, I've got about three minutes left in this episode, so I'm going to explore this room, and then we can go outside next time. So you can click on just about everything, like this. It's obviously the machine's angiospermatological magnetic flux converter. Of course! And this one is the machine's magnoliophytic impulse capacitor, which is humming pleasantly. This one is the Petalonian plasma conduit. This thing over here is the anthic discharge vent. It gives the room a very pleasant smell. Don't touch that, it'll turn you purple. Good to know. That's a rock. This ancient stone spent thousands of years deep in the bowels of the earth, in dark places where no human will ever go. It's useful for leaning against. I can appreciate that, yeah. What's this? Better not mess with the lever. 
It controls the perianthic discriminator. I don't know what that means. Bottles! An amino acid lubricant. Bottle of liquid mustache ions. And a bottle of 27 polypeptides. I don't know what most of that means. A portrait of Rupert Mysterious Druid. Not the Mysterious Druid, you can tell by the trim around his hood. This is a painting of Herbert Mysterious Druid. This is a chameleon mushroom, cleverly disguised as a portrait. And this is a small portrait of Mutatio, the Mysterious Druid family dog. This sounds like a really interesting place to grow up in. A nail that can read braille. Can this nail read braille? A nail that's waiting to exhale. And this nail is not afraid of hail. And this nail was bought in a sale. I love this game. This is fantastic. It's just not afraid to be silly. All the properties of cellular mitosis. The biotic book of biological logic. Techno-Druidism in the Age of Superstition by Dr. Robert Tentacle. Of course! Biochoreology. Hmm. Experiments in Mendel hybridization. Okay, that actually makes sense, though. That's a real thing. The structure of evolutionary theory. A small purple box of chocolates. The contents no longer resemble chocolate but are beginning to approach full sentience. Interesting. Well, I've just hit time, so I'm gonna wrap up here, and when we come back next time, we're going to go outside and see what's in other rooms. So please feel free to leave a like, a favorite, or subscribe to my channel, and see more wonderful videos made by me, featuring me and games that you are sure to love. So I'll see you next time, in episode 2 of The Sea Will Claim Everything.